Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norma Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. We can dance, oh, we can dance, everyone join the dance. Yeah! Uh, what dance are we doing? We're dancing. The Changeling Dance. The Changeling Dance. <laughs> uh, if you're no friend of mine, you ain't. <laughs> oh, boys. Much uh, fun. Anyway, uh, also joining us is Terra. Everybody dance now. Oh, boys. Uh, I got no idea for dance songs. Like, mm, what now? Nope, no idea. Uh, what? You can do it. <laughs> What's love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Uh, the SNL skit just kills me. Anywho, uh, in today's episode, we are going to review uh, Friendship is Magic issue 84. Uh, in this issue, Ocella struggles to complete the big project for the school's, School of Friendship's midterm. Yay, a simple, quick, and yep. So, uh, before we read through, or before we review, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silva, what do you think? Well, the timing on this is interesting, is that this came out, I believe, at the end of Feats of Friendship, the multi-parter focusing on the students. And so, when this comic came out, it was like, Ocellus month. Everything about Ocellus, and that's fine by me. Because she's cute. It is interesting. This is one of the few times where Ocellus really had to struggle with being a changeling and the legacy that goes with that. You know, sort of wrestling with what was and trying to change pe- uh, Pony's opinions. It's also a, a time where we got to see the main six, especially Twilight, being actual teachers and in a positive way. Because I'm afraid a very real part of the School of Friendships run was just seeing them screw up royally. <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of plot points to talk about. There, It is, however, very positive ideas and presentations. All right, I agree with that. Um, Tara, what about you? Well, I mean, when I first saw the comic, I, you know, I see the picture of all of these, uh, I guess you could say, leaders, and I see Ocellus, so I'm like, oh, what's this? Is Ocellus, like, trying to face her, face her past about... Uh, her colony used to be evil and whatnot. And as you read through, I'm like, oh, okay, it's it's a different type of story. Okay, that threw me off the loop. And it's something that I wasn't really expecting. It's something that I, I think I've rarely seen before. And usually uh, when you see Ocellus in the show, you see her, like, you don't really see her struggle or anything. You see her struggle a couple of times where she changed into Chrysalis and couldn't change to anything else. But aside from that, I don't remember seeing her struggle on anything else. Like, she she kind of feels like uh, one of those perfect students, almost like a Mary Sue, but student form. <laughs> all right, all right. And as for me, I uh, this comic was fun. This comic was fun. Uh, I agree with Tara in terms of the cover because when I saw this cover, I thought, oh, um, what was this again? I, I don't remember. Uh, what, oh, is it? Ocellus transforming into the villains and whatnot, but couldn't change back. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's read. Let's read. Oh, it's this story. Uh, it's like almost that that, that story from Saved by the Bell, where that one girl's just saying, "I'm so excited, I'm so excited." But anywho, yeah. Um, we 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 got something else instead. So anyway, we, if you have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anyway, let's head into the comic. We start off with Princess Twilight, or Hitmare Twilight, telling the students that, Yo, we got midterms. I hope you're gonna enjoy them. Ha <laughs> ha! And the students six are just saying like, Ah, oh God, no, not a midterm. I, I don't like midterm. Midterm sucks. I, I need to memorize books and stuff. No, 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 no. We, we no like. And Twilight here just says, You know what? This time, midterm is going to be different because you ain't going to um, go memorizing stuff. Instead, you got to be creative. You got to think with your head, do some stuff like st- 
stuff that's creative. Maybe write a poem, maybe do some arts. I don't know, do your creative side. And we see that Smolder and Gallus says, can we just memorize books again? Like, can we have the test? Oh god, no. And while this is going on, we see that Ocellus is just having a hard time con- <laughs> just having a hard time uh, processing all of this. And the student six head to the library to discuss what to do. And uh, offhandedly, Spike just says, No memorization? No tests? I don't even know you anymore. <laughs> uh, fun lines. <clears throat> In the library, we see the student six struggle a bit about what to do, especially Ocellus. Ocellus got no idea what creative is. Like, she is a student of logic and usually just do things by the book. And on the other hand, we see Silverstream just kind of having at it. Like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? Uh, should I do a sing-along? Should I do painting? Mosaic, diorama, board games, and so on. She she has a lot of ideas, but she just couldn't pick one. On the other hand, we see Yona making friend li- <laughs> friendship bracelets. And she is really good at it, and the whole crew of friends are impressed by it. So, while this is going on, Osiris is just confused and just having a hard time trying to figure what to do. And Smolder just says, why not do stuff like you're changeling, changeling are creative, so why not do what changeling do best? And with that inspiration, Ocellus accepts or Ocellus takes the plan and just um, goes away from the group. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, I do I do love the line from Spike saying, I don't even know you anymore. It shows Twilight is actually growing in her uh, role as a teacher. She's not doing everything literally by the book. I mean, this seems like a school that would want to want to nurture uh, creative expression and not just follow, <laughs> give up the accredited lesson plans. Instead, go with something that really forces your students to think. And it's hilarious to see uh, like uh, Gallus and Smolder wanting to be away from midterms, but then, oh, can we just take a test? Everyone thinks creativity is easy until they actually have to do it. So there's good and bad and all that. Uh, but so far, we haven't gotten to the meat of it yet. We also haven't talked about the artist. Ah, Tony. Tony Kosciusko. Uh, I, I like his work. He's awesome. But what about it? Well, just it's been interesting to see how he draws the student six, uh, especially at a point where uh, a little bit later when they're outside hanging out by a fountain. There's a lot of everyone really leaning to and fro, trying to install a lot of action into what is a pretty dialogue heavy encounter. And I would describe it as everyone looks like they're mid run. Gallus and uh, Sandbar are playing ball. Uh, Silverstream is leaning away from Yona, who's raising a hand, but also looking back towards her. So you get a lot of sense of going to and fro. Stop and go. Exactly. do do Makes sense. And, and Tony is good with those kind of things. Like uh, we mentioned before, uh, when Tony does his art, it's, uh, it's a lot of detail that is kind of un... Is it's not unwelcome, but it's not needed at points. But he really does uh, well with his art, uh, with what, uh, with the backgrounds and whatnot. Yeah, and you know what? I have nothing much to say. I, I like his art. He is up there with Andy, Andy Price. There you go. The true test of his artwork is up and coming. Mm, true that. True that. So, uh, is there anything more, Silva? Nope, not at the moment. All right. Tara, what about you? Oh, I really like the artwork. I, I like how it doesn't look, uh, how do I say this? It doesn't look all Play-Doh-like or doesn't look like something that's been taken from the show and been traced over. I don't know. I just like how it looks. It looks natural to me in the comic, at least. Like, I, I, don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I just like how the art looks in this one. 
And I can't really say much right now because, you know, it's just the story set up with, uh, you know, basically, hey, you got to do this. It's like, okay. And then they're trying to come up with ideas. And oh, yeah, I just pretty much what Silo said. I also like Spike's line where he's like, no memorization, no test. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I forgot to mention in the first page, we see Spike mouth agape with what Twilight just says. In fact, there's not going to be a test at all. <laughs> and Spike's like, what? Much fun to be had. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. Is it okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right then. So we go outside of the school. The students are just hanging about, getting fresh air. And a silver just mentions, yo, um, have any of you guys seen Ocellus? I-, I haven't seen her lately. And Yona just says, there she is. <laughs> okay. And Ocellus just tackles um, Silver and they hug it out and whatnot. Ocellus just says, oh, I, I have a lot of things to, to do. Uh, I'm working on interpretive dance. That's going to be fun. So uh, I got to rehearse and stuff. So Also, I need to go to the library to do some research. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Smolder just says, like, this is not going to end well. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I I guess they already hung out a lot, so they kind of know. So, I'm guessing this is the next day or whatnot, because we see that um, Silver is knitting or making a quilt. I'm guessing he's, she's making a quilt. And then uh, Smolder is carving the Tree of Harmony from rocks that she got from the Dragonlands. And Gallus is making a poem. And Sandbar is creating the castle of friendship with Play-Doh? I don't know. And they just wonder, where is Ocellus? And she runs through the library grabbing a book about obscure tales of Equestria. Oh no, this is not going to end well at all. Uh, She goes to the library, takes the books, and heads back to an empty class to rehearse her dance. While that happens, um, they go to class and Ocellus is sleeping because she's too tired. Silver just mentions, we should probably tell Hitmer Twilight about this because this is not going to end well. I mean, there's a lot of things that's going on and we sh- I'm, I'm concerned for her. But the rest of the guy says, ah, we don't really need to. This is normal for her. This is normal for her. In class, we see Ocellus sleep in all three of the teachers' lesson plan. And all of them have really, really loud stuff from, well, not Applejack's class, at least uh, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, uh, from a bear roaring to a party cannon being exploded. Yay. After class is done, Silver just goes up to Ocella saying how concerned she is about her and how uh, she's not taking care of her health and whatnot. And Ocellus just snaps at her and tells her she doesn't really understand about changing and whatnot and she should leave her alone. And in the night, we see that the other students are going to do an intervention about the things that's going on. Silver is really serious about this. And yeah, so they they head to one of the empty classes and they see... uh, Ocellus doing her interpretive dance and oh my god it's so awesome like every step she makes she transforms into a pony and ooh that's so awesome but she trip and falls I'm gonna pause here Tara what do you think man like there's a lot to take in but what do you think of the whole sequence I think it was really great okay so I like how Ocellus is like seen we all know she's basically the teacher's pet like she you know she actually pays attention in class and all that stuff but then after it's like okay so I th- I th- it's like a little bit of a mystery here because it's like okay i think because as you're reading through the book you people probably re- get the impression of okay i think i know where she's going at or something and uh you see ocellus is so focused on to her like she passes by all of her friends at the fountain and then she's actually sleeping in class for once you think you know maybe it'd be gallus or um uh what's the oh, i'm forgetting the other dragon's name a small uh, smolder. smolder yes uh yeah usually you see them in the sleeping in class or just you know relaxing but no this time it's ocellus 
and I actually like too how usually Silverstream, she's you know the one that's uh, like all energetic and you know like wow look at this look at this but no now she's actually being more serious because she actually cares for she cares for her friend and then once you see the dance it's like oh wow every, like what you just said every step she takes every move she makes won't be watching her <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just pretty great to look at all right uh silver what about you well it is it is good to see uh the student six being very aware of one another, not being sure of what to do. Just asking, now do we go to the teachers now? But first they try an intervention. And here's the thing. This is where Ocellus's motivation is uh, on full display. She's basically saying, this is my chance to show everyone that changeling powers can be used for good, for something beautiful. She's really taking on pretty much the burden of the entire changeling race right now. Species? Either way, uh, she's trying to add as positive a presentation as possible. And it's really hard to dissuade someone from that because they're at cross motive. She's trying to give her all for changing perception of the changelings. Her friends are afraid she's putting too much of herself out there and not giving, holding enough in reserve to actually care for herself. So give it all for the cause or, or self-care. There's a hard balance there. And Tony's artwork is wonderful, especially as he he conveys a dance through time with all the pillars. Uh, not something easily done. I mean, how do you how do you convey shape shifting in a still image? The shifting part's a bit hard. Yeah, and here's where I wish that we got this episode in the show where uh, we we can see it being animated because uh, just just imagine that. Every step that Ocellus makes is being animated and transforming from one pony to the other. That is going to be nuts. But uh, we we didn't really get that because well, this is the comic. But still, like I would love to see this being animated. It would be really cool. We're about to see teaching at its best for the main six, but it does somewhat reflect poorly that Applejack Fl and Fluttershy. Uh, they had a student asleep in their classrooms and they didn't even take note. Probably one of those things where... Uh, not in frame? I don't know. They've got the whole classroom in front of them and Ocellus is literally being carried by her peers. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, I mean, maybe... maybe uh, no comment, man. Like, it's one of those things where it could... They, they could do something about it, but not in the script. <laughs> Uh, but then, you, but then, if that's the answer, we've already lifted the veil or uh, the curtain and revealed the man behind it. Yeah, it's one of those. It's just it's less than it was. Whenever you have to say, well, because the script says so, well, then the story is no longer its own organic thing. It's now feeling much more artificial. True, and if if I feel like so, maybe maybe I'm an apologist for this one, but it feels like yes. Uh, why didn't Applejack, Twilight, or even Pinky take note of this and do something about it? But maybe they did, but it's not being shown or stuff. It's, it's one of those things where things are happening and they didn't really want to do it. I don't know. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. So, like I mentioned before... Uh, Ocellus strips and falls and breaks down because she feels like she is failing at what she's doing. And the rest of the gang are trying are there to help her. And yeah, Ocellus says, I, I don't need help. I've got this under control. Every creature is going to love love it. They're, they're, go they're all going to be so excited to see it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> And she's also scared. But at the same time, too, um, while, while she says she's excited, she transforms into Princess Celestia, Nightmare Moon, King Sombra, Discord, and Princess Twilight. And at the same time, each transformation is making her really, really tired. And she breaks down and uh, hugs it out with her friends. Uh, Princess Twilight comes in and here's the news from Yona. Uh... Twilight wants to have a word with 
uh, or sell us in private and she just says like if I realized what was going on I wouldn't have pushed you this hard and Twilight just asked how many creatures did you transform or were you going to transform in a 10 minute presentation and Osella just says 346 I'm already here just a more agape like wait what you, you there's a lot wow she 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 could have been a really good infiltrator <coughs> and well she's doing it just because she wants to prove that the changeling race are good now that they're not like their previous counterparts and whatnot and Osiris just asked Twilight what would you do in if you're in my shoes and Twilight just bluntly answered I would try to do way more than I could handle completely stress myself out and feel like a total failure when it wasn't perfect and Twilight just straight out says I'm a bad example for this like yeah no like I'm terrible at it but I am learning to let loose and not t- uh, not do stuff that I couldn't do myself I mean uh, we all mess up and what not sorry you know um, see you just messed up right now yeah I know <laughs> and <laughs> Tola just mentions uh, she's not a great example uh, but since the launch of the school of friendship, she's been trying to put less pressure on every creature, on every creature, including herself. So, like mentioned before, uh, like Silver mentioned before, uh, trying to do things differently from the norm. And when Ocellus just says, um, "I guess I messed up," Twilight just says, "No, nah, you didn't." Uh, um, she says uh, she's actually impressed with her vision and is certainly creative. And Twilight just tells her to, you know what? I like the interpretive, interpretive dance, but you should really narrow your scope. And you know what? Why, why don't you try and do something on a smaller scale? Maybe your friends could help you with that. And well, with that, we go on the next panel. We head to the School of Friendship midterm presentation. We get uh, Gallus reading his poem. Uh, it's not a great poem, but it's something. And ends it with, Equestria School of Friendship rocks! And every point he goes wild. Yay. Much awesome. I forget, is that a Bill and Ted or... Yeah, I think it's a Bill and Ted reference. Probably. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else, or is it Back to the Future? But I think it was Bill and Ted. But anywho, carrying on, uh, Twilight comes up to the stage and introduces the last presenter, and that's going to be an interpretive dance by Ocellus. And words can't do justice with this one, because the art here is just awesome, but I'm going to try. We start off with Ocellus, transforming into Queen Chrysalis, leaping into the air, transforming into the main six, landing, and telling the story of how uh, King Thor- King Thorax, Starlight Glimmer, Trixie, Twilight, and Discord save Equestria. And moving on to her transforming into her friends. And that's it. I, like I mentioned before, words did not do justice. But once you understood what was the dance about it makes sense and the story was well um, Osela's story from her very conception to where she is now and that is really awesome and with that uh, all the teachers Twilight gave a break to all the teachers and students because of what happened and with that, comic ends. So, Silver, what do you have to say? And also final thoughts. Well, this is an enjoyable piece, uh, especially as it's really one of the few times Ocellus gets a lot of focus. Uh, it is kind of funny that the changeling, probably the one who has the most to be self-conscious about, 
uh, given their rough history. Uh, she didn't really get to do a lot in the school. And so, I, honestly, I think Yona kind of dominated the main, the student six stories. So it's really fun to see her work with this, trying to show her best. But then, honestly, Twilight's wrong. She's the best pony to talk about uh, this experience because she, it, this isn't a do as I say, not as I do. She free, she fully owns her own uh, habits and possibly mistakes and saying, look, I, I've been there, but you don't have to go that way. And, you know, that's a voice of experience passing on what she's learned to a younger generation. That's the teachers at their best. It's what I'd hoped for uh, throughout more of seasons eight and nine, which unfortunately didn't always happen. So I'm glad to see here in the comics. Yeah, the comics is going to be one of those places where we get to experience more. So yeah, that's great. As you say, displaying in, uh, an interpretive dance in a still medium while shapeshifting is also a wonderful uh, test of uh, Tony's skills and they get past us with flying colors. True. And I, 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 like for me, when I when I tried to tell the audience what's going on, it fell flat. I, I fell flat on my face because I couldn't um, see or I couldn't just send a message to them because there's a lot of things that are happening and there's a lot of components that needs to be there to make the interpretive dance work. You know, honestly, the art is awesome. The quote-unquote motion in the comic is great and whatnot. But I feel like if this had some music behind it and an animation, like the message would be clearer. We work with what we have and what we have is pretty great. Oh, yeah, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. If that's all I got. All right, then. And also, Tara, what, are you, what about you? What do you think? And also final thoughts. Well, all in all, I really, I really like this. Like, I like how I said before, Ocel is, you know, we we see her struggle for once. I mean, we see her struggle before, like, as I said, but th we basically have a whole comic slash episode about her trying to get this test together, and Twilight's like pretty much Silver uh, described it very well. Thought like it's like she's telling Ocel uh, her past experience and she's basically telling her hey this happened to me before and I could see that happening with other people too like uh, f um, trying to think of an example here but say for example I'm telling you something Norm about what happened to me and now you know hmm. I don't know I'm, t I'm not really good at explaining things but I think I know what you're trying I think you know what I'm trying to get at <laughs> yep yep totally totally so what, what do you think about the interpretive dance did, did uh, the message dance, came across? The, the dance, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I mean, music. I, I don't really think we need music, or maybe we do. But I, this also would be pretty to see in animation. Like, yes, we don't exactly see the transformations while she's dancing. We just see like you know, multiple ponies. Like, yes, you do have to use your imagination that she is changing as she takes every step. But when you first look at it, it's like, whoa, where did all these guys come from? Are they all dancing in the same room together? But it's like, no way. It's Ocellus changing. The only way you can tell that she's changing is with the sparks flying around. And it, it, it works in the comic, though. Yep. And, and like, uh, if this was uh, a Japanese manga, we'd probably see panel by panel of the uh, character moving and changing and whatnot. I mean, that could be cool, but not not here. I mean, that would take too much time. And as for me, this comic was a lot of fun to read. I really enjoyed the story, and it's pretty deep. Like to prove yourself, uh, to to do to take the extra mile and prove yourself is not a foreign concept for most. And struggling to do your best is one of those cases where everybody understands and everybody tries to achieve it. Uh, some people may take it easy with the tasks at hand and some might take it too far and too extreme where they stress themselves out. Uh, in this scenario here, we see that Ocellus is trying to prove to not only herself but to the others other creatures that the changelings are 
a better race now. They're not the same as before. And probably there's a stigma about change things that are not being told to us. So it's one of those things where, yes, this is going to be... Uh, the, the story here is awesome because of that little detail and the lesson that... Well, not really lesson, but the story that Twilight tries to convey is also good there too. Uh, it shows that Twilight is, well, growing up and can, well, pass along her lessons that she experienced onto others. And most of the time uh, with the interpretive dance, I do wish that we had some music and motion to go along with it because it could have done wonders. I, I do wonder if there's a mission comic for this issue, how would it look like? Probably would look great. Oh well, but that's about it. I, I really enjoy the comic, so yay, much awesomeness. So, uh, moving on. Uh, Silver, did we do the annual 2013? I think we did, right? I think so. Let's see here. The, an- the annual comic. I'm just trying to recall what happened in the annual. Yeah, it's the one where Sunset Shimmer, the fall and the fall of Sunset Shimmer. Oh yes, we did that quite a while ago. Ah, right then. Yeah, just just trying to remember because did we? Yeah, yeah, we did, we did. So, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week? Well, I believe we're are we back to pony life? Yeah, why not? Let, let's carry on. I, I I do believe that next week Discord's coming back. Uh, we're going to see Discord in the flesh or whatever it is. Well, we're going to continue with Norman's mental breakdown as we head back to pony life, in what I actually consider to be one of the worst episodes. Or at least a personal low point. Uh, we're going to be looking at Badge of Shame and Discord's Peak. Mm. Uh, are we finally going to resolve that story with Fetishai? Not quite yet. Mm. All right. But th- this will be the part where you can you could say, okay, this is how it's very different from Friendship is Magic. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is going to be up to interpretation. Hmm, all right, and, and I see Discord, so yay. Uh, I, I, I've seen him in uh, shorts that are posted on the Twitter, so now finally I get to see him in his 11, well, five minutes episode. So that's going to be very exciting because uh, I want to hear Discord's voice because, you know, honestly, uh, Spike's, the new voice for Spike, is kind of growing on me because. It could be because of how tiny Spike is in Pony Life that it make it that it kind of matches with the new voice. So I, I want to hear how this actor kind of plays John Delancey. So I want to see. It's not going to be the same, but it'll be interesting to hear how he tries to match it. Well, well, you'll know in a week. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, and with. That if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at ibushigmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, lots of places. You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my comics and videos through Kofi and Patreon. Uh, just do a search for the Silver Quill. Uh, on YouTube, I'm un- you can find me both by searching for After the Fact or Silver Quill. I shall appear. And then on Wednesdays, when there's a new comic, I will be posting a review on EquestriaDaily.com. Yay, awesomeness. Go follow him, guys and girls. Silver is just awesome with his work. Like, he put a lot of effort into them, and you guys should really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, but no need to feel guilty. If you don't go for it, you don't go for it. And- you must. It's not going to be shame, <laughs> shame, shame. For shame. But anywho, uh, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Toytero1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Yay, awesomeness. Go follow him too. Or oh, not shame. Oh, no. Sean. No need for that, Norman. I'm not that horse famous. <laughs> not yet. This ain't Game of Thrones. Shame, shame, shame. 
<laughs> but anywho, and also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. So if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Requil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So uh, I'm thinking about doing a dance. It's called being a tree. I'd like to be a tree. Oh wait, I have a tree on my back. What am I saying? <laughs> well, I appreciate that you're trying to branch out. <laughs> yeah, like uh, my 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 dance needs to be rooted in reality. But I think you you might be barking up the wrong tree. I know. I, I'm just stump with this idea that I have like couldn't really bloom it that's okay it just leaves you pining for more you guys making these tree puns I can't really think of anything <laughs> uh, surprisingly enough I, I, I can do tree puns <laughs> all I can think of is uh, one two tree <laughs> and, you, and you, you're supposed to be part tree Torterra I know yeah, there's a tree on your back and all. Shame. Oh, oh, we're back to shame again. What is this, the Spanish Inquisition? <laughs> no, ex- nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, boys. Monkey Python's fun. Monkey Python's fun.